Hey folks, this is Vint with Dan's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Ego. This is a game that you can find on Steam's Early Access program for about 30 bucks. So, it's important to stress Early Access, that means everything that you're about to see here is subject to change, including this review. And on top of that, I've only played for roughly 7 hours. This is the kind of game that you're going to need to play for a very, very long time in order to unlock a bunch of content. This is... Well, think of it like Minecraft, but with more of a focus on community and crafting, and less so on survival. So, what is Eco all about? Well, in the standard game, um, whenever you create a server, you can either join someone else's server, or you can create your own and host your own. Um, and yes, you can have it friends only, so if you're one of those recluse people like myself, um, you can jump in host your own server, single player, or just invite your friends. That's totally doable. Um, but default settings, you've got this meteor that is going to hit your world in 30 days real time. Not in-game time, uh, 30 days real time. So the game will continue playing even when you're not playing it. Okay, And th just remember that because that also plays a part in how you gain skill points, but I'll get to that in a little bit. So, standard game is, Meteor's going to hit, 30 days, you got to build a society and try and figure out a way to stop it. Personally, I've never done that. I've never gotten that far. Um, I don't play multiplayer games and I don't join servers that uh, have a mass loads of people. I like to play on my own or with some close friends and that's it. So, because of that... I doubt I'll ever be able to stop this meteor within 30 days. Luckily, whenever you're setting up your game for the first time, um, you can change the impact day from, say, 30 days to 60 days, 90 days, or you can even just turn off the meteor altogether so that there is no time limit. And you can make the goal whatever you want. Create a society, create a world for you and your friends to live in, and you can grow in and have some fun. That is awesome. So the fact that you can turn that meteor off and just have some fun, let time pass, and just grow a civilization together, I love that. That is that is brilliant. I'm, I'm so glad that they added the ability to remove that meteor. But if you want that challenge, you can work toward that. But you can modify that challenge too if you want. Again, 30 days, 60, 90, you can type it in. There's also a filter whenever you're creating a world, a uh, collaboration. And this will determine how the game balances difficulty. So, for example, if you've got a bunch of people playing, you can put it on high uh, collaboration, meaning that players gain skill points more slow, uh, you know, more slowly. Um, skill gain is slower. Uh, craft time is slower, and so on. So, with the more people you have, the more the multipliers are reduced. Whereas if you're playing single player, you can put it on no collaboration and you'll gain XP a whole lot faster and the game will be balanced to uh, accommodate the fact that you're one person trying to do everything in this civilization rather than a bunch of people all pitching in. You know what I mean? So there are ways to filter all of that. You can type in your own values, but you can choose from the drop down easily. And, you know, pick one that's right for you. And then again, you can modify some things as you go. So once you actually get into the game, it plays a little bit like Minecraft in the sense that it's block based um, where, you know, you'll get a pickaxe or you'll get a shovel or what have you. And you'll be interacting with different blocks. Um, there's food all around. There's animals all around. These animals do not attack you. They just sort of wander around. You can hunt them once you get the weapons to do so, but um, for the most part, you're trying to create the society without damaging the environment, it, ideally. Um, but I gotta warn you though, this game is incredibly grindy in terms of uh, resources. Like, chopping down trees, and then going to your crafting station, uh, there's a bunch of crafting stations, and some of them work outdoors, the basic ones work outdoors, some of them only work indoors over a closed roof. So you have to build these houses, and then put the crafting stations in there, and for one person to do all of that can take an hour or two to do. You've got to cut down the trees, you've got to cut up the 
cut up the big log into little logs, then refine that even further, turn turn those logs into this, and then maybe turn them into boards, or uh, take, take the result and uh, get your hammer and put down walls, uh, you can put down flooring, different things like that, ceilings, so you're going to be doing a lot of construction in this game, a lot of crafting. Uh, there's storage bins that you can create, storage areas, and they have a limited area. So the way I've got mine set up, I've got like a huge, just a, a regular huge storage area. And I'm, it has a lot of slots, and I'm throwing stuff there as I need to. But I also have some specialized uh, storage bins and smaller plots that are specialized in just, say, wood or just in stone and so on. So you can do that if you want to. Um, it does, I, I will, I, I just do want to warn you though, there is a bit of a learning curve with the UI and how to interact with things. Um, my biggest hurdle in this game was figuring out how to do something. Like, let's say I was trying to figure out, okay, why isn't this crafting station crafting this anymore? Or why can't I craft this? I was able to before, oh, oh, there's calories in this game. So, wait a minute, I'm, I'm hungry, I can't do this. Um, I'm trying to chop down this tree and I can't craft, that's because I have no calories. Well, uh, the way calories work in this game, it's not so much of a means of staying alive. It's more of a means as earning the resource called labor. Labor is a resource in this game, just like wood, just like, you know, stone. Uh, typically, like, if you want to craft something, you'll need this much wood or this much stone and then this much labor. Labor is calories. So if you run out of calories, you can't do anything. So you're constantly eating, keeping your calories up. And in doing so, you'll be able to craft things and work in, in the environment, chop down trees and the like, so that you can, you know, continue doing things. Um, there is a campfire that you can cook food in. You can just eat the food raw out of the ground as you find it. There's tons of stuff. There's corns, there's berries, turnips. Um, again, there are animals like wolves, and I think there's like buffalo and sheep and ram. Um, they don't attack you, like I said, but you can hunt them at some point later on and just earn you know, meat that way, but right now I'm going all vegetarian, it's just easier for me, but there's so many resources, I've, I've never, I've never not been able to find food ever, so there's just so much given to me, and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to run out of food, which is good, but then you can go to the campfire if you want to, and assuming you've got the right skills, you can then cook better food from the raw food that you're given. Now, I guess let me go ahead and talk about skills for a little bit. Now, there are two different ways you can earn skill point or I guess XP in this game. There's character XP. Uh, character XP is earned automatically per real day of time. And that multiplier is determined by your food value and your housing value. So the better your housing score, and the better your food score, and your food score is like a combination of protein, carb, and fat. Like if you're eating balanced meals, then great. That, that'll that contribute to your XP multiplier. And also the XP multiplier is also determined by the server settings. Whenever you're setting up your server, if you're playing single player, you'll level up faster. But getting back to character XP, you are earning this XP per real day. Uh, you earn so many experience points per real day. And these skill points, these, these, this character XP, they allow you to unlock specialties. What are specialties? Well, if you open up your skills menu, you're going to see a whole bunch of things. Um, it's sort of like um, Stonehearth, where you've got like carpenters, you've got uh, chefs, you've got engineers, you've got farmers, you've got hunters, mason, uh, survivalists, smithies, and tailors. You've got these primary trees, okay? And then within each tree, there are specialties. So, for example, the chef's specialties are campfire cooking, advanced baking, advanced cooking, baking, cooking, cutting-edge cooking. So, you're going to be spending these specialty points, unlocking these specialties. And again, you earn these points via real, real time. So the longer you keep your server running, um, you know, the longer... No, I, I, actually, you know what? I don't even think you need the server running to do it. Again, it's based on real time, not server time. So when you go to bed at night, 
and then you wake up the next morning in theory, you should have more skill points or more specialty points available to you because, you know, you're earning this over time. And again, if you want to increase that number, get your food score up there and get your housing score up there. So that there's that. So you're going to be earning this XP and unlocking these specialties. There's also something called um, skill points in this game, where uh, or skills, I should say. And these specialties and these skills can only be learned via books. So you're going to be crafting these books in order to unlock those specialties in the first place. So all those things I named off just now under this chef specialty... Uh, or under the chef profession, there was the advanced baking, advanced cooking. You do not have the ability to throw any points into that yet. You have to first craft the skill book, and then when you right-click on that skill book, you earn a scroll, and then um, you can learn. You can give the scroll to whoever you want, and they learn that skill, that that specialty, um, and then they can throw points into that. So, and these, and these levels, each of these specialties have a, a tree of their own. So, for example, Advanced Baking has, I think, a total of seven levels. Level one is um, you've got new recipes that you'll learn. There's an efficiency bonus. Uh, level two is a 55% efficiency bonus. Uh, level three is a 60% efficiency bonus. Um, and a lot of these specialties and a lot of these skills are like, um, a lot of them are passive buffs. The more you level it with your points, the more efficient you become. So in theory, anyone can chop down trees. Anyone can cook uh, the basic stuff. But those that are leveled up in those specialties um, will be able to spend less labor and uh, they, they have more recipes at their disposal. So people are going to be specializing this in this game. If you've got a large community of people on one server, you're going to have one chef just leveling themselves up in that profession, being the best they can be and doing only that. And then you've got maybe someone doing logging or carpentry or whatever. So like I said at the beginning of this video, this is like a Minecraft game, but it focuses on the community and it focuses on skills and uh, and crafting. Less so of survival. There's no wa I have not had to drink water. The only time I've had to eat food is when I'm out of calories to actually craft something um, or perform work in the environment. That's it. Um, there's no like hunger uh, or thirst or anything like that. So this is like a super casual survival game, but it's a pretty heavy community slash crafting game. And I'm liking it. Um, it's... It's hard, though, for one player, I gotta say. It's just, it's time-consuming. And like I said, there is a bit of a learning curve with, like, the, 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 the UI and the windows. Like, okay, I clicked on the storage tab. I opened the tool bench. There's the storage tab. I click on the storage tab. There's, like, five different areas here. There's a small stockpile. There's my, my, uh, there's my torch stand, which is nearby. There's a storage chest that I have nearby. Um, the campsite, which is my primary starting area that's nearby. So all of these things are showing up under my storage tab and I can freely drag and drop as I see fit, but only to those that are close by. If you've got resources on say, one part of your city and you've got resources on the other part, you can't drag and drop. You're going to have to start creating ways to transport those goods back and forth between those two locations. Um, you can claim land in this game. Um, as you claim land, it'll be yours. No one else can do anything on it. Um, there is an advanced, like, government in this game. I have not gotten to this yet. Like I said, I've only played eight hours. Um, but you'll be able to um, create a government create laws and create a currency system you can create shops and then create things and then there's like a supply demand um graph slash chart that is compared to other people people and you know you'll be able to buy and sell goods that way um you'll have to maintain tools like there's bows and sickles and pickaxes and machetes and so on um so yeah there's a lot to this game that will keep you busy for quite a while. Um, again, I've played for eight hours, and I'm only in the early onset. I have, I have one building with three crafting stations in it. I've got two crafting stations that are outside. I have not hunted yet. Um, I have not even taken a first skill yet. I'm saving my skill points for 
when I when I when I finally decide on one, um, like I want I want to be sure that okay, this specialty seems to be the best for me right now because I'm doing a lot of it. Then I'll I'll start learning it. And again, the more that you do it, the better you get at it, and the more you level up with it. So that's really cool. So yeah, this game has a lot going for it. Um, assuming that you like a community focused. Uh, again, I'm not going to use the word survival game, but I'm going to use the word crafting game because that's what this is. You're going to be uh, specializing in different skills and talents. You're going to be managing a community or being just part of one, assuming that you're the follower and you're on someone else's server. And yeah, there is a lot of things to craft. Again, there's a currency system in this game that I have not gotten to yet. You can you can create contracts for various jobs. And um, players on your server can accept those contracts and, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll complete them for you. Again, laws, you can run for election. Uh, again, claim property and share rights to those properties. Um, so, yeah, um, lots to do in this game. And uh, compared to Minecraft, I mean, yeah, Minecraft has a lot going for it, too. Uh, this game does have mod support. I just, I don't play around with the mods enough to know if they're worth it or not. But there's local single player there's online multiplayer but i just want to warn you that if you do even if you do play single player you're playing on a server and it's online so um if the company goes belly up in the future there's no way for you to continue playing offline if those servers shut down you're screwed so i'm always wary when it comes to playing games that are always online but that being said this game has been in in the works for quite a while now and yeah, it's it's getting better with every patch. So yeah, I do recommend this one. There's a lot to do. Um, had I, I I got a press copy a long time ago, I believe. I, I don't I don't even remember anymore. I I think I got this back in like 2018 or 17, something like that, when it was first coming out. Um, but yeah, um, it, it's come a long way since then, and I do recommend it. But like I said, there is a learning curve, and the UI can be a bit frustrating at times trying to figure out what to do next. But all in all, it's a fairly good game, and um, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So go check this one out. If you guys haven't already, subscribed to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.